Thank you. Thank you very much. So uh, thanks, and uh, I tell you, it's a real honor to be here this morning. Uh, it, it's always great to be around uh, other people that care about flash memory. Uh, for those of you that don't know, I uh, have recently joined Micron, so I'm uh, quite happy to be part of the Micron technology team. I think it should be no surprise to anybody that the 90s were all about speed, and of course the 2000s were all about feeds. There's no doubt in my mind, and I think by the attendance at this conference today, that the decade that we are in right now is going to be all about memory. The first reason is because consumers are memory aware. In 1990s, when we were all back uh, doing our job and looking at computing, uh, you know, it was really, I remember walking in with my new computer and go, you know, hey, guess what? I just got the 600 gigahertz. What do you have? And there was, that was the conversation. Uh, the conversation today with consumers being memory aware is whether or not their iPhone has 16 gigabytes or whether it has 32 gigabytes. Everything that we buy from a consumer standpoint in one way or another has gobs of memory integrated into it. And decisions about what we buy and what we don't buy are very much about the memory associated with that appliance. You know, things like set-top boxes, you know, it may not be uh, NAND flash memory in there today, but when you go buy a DVR, you're talking about, do I have a 500 gigabyte drive, do I have a terabyte drive? When you're talking about the iPad, the iPhone, any of the uh, devices shown on this picture, it's all about how much memory you need. Ten years ago, I, I'm pretty sure that most people didn't know what a gigabyte was. And now, you know, my daughter, my nieces, my nephews, they talk about gigabytes. I'm not sure they know what they mean, but they know more is better. And for me, that's the important piece of it. So it's gigabytes, not gigahertz. That's, the, that's, that's what consumers are being faced with. But it's not only consumers, right? I think, you know, if you get one thing out of the the conference here today, or over the past couple of days, is it's, it's not about gigahertz, it's about solutions, and how do we take memory and increase the performance in the computing platform. Well, what you're looking at here is a chart of utilization in servers, and it should be no surprise to everybody that utilization in servers is not that good. And so to the extent that we can increase system level utilization, system level performance, uh, besides virtualization, I fundamentally believe, as I think most people do sitting in this room, it's by adding gigabytes to the system. And so fundamentally, that's what we see going on uh, in the computing platform. And so things like SSDs, obviously, and system level solutions uh, are things that we're obviously going to see over the time uh, and increase the performance in the computing platform. And so the other thing is, again, consumer devices are becoming computers. I mean, there's no doubt in my mind about this, right? I mean, it, it, the amount of power that we have in something like an iPhone. You know, again, I remember going back to the 90s trying to convince my parents that they needed a PC in their house, right? Why did they need a PC? Well, originally it was so they could balance their checkbook. Right? You guys remember that. Oh, you can balance your checkbook. And then after balancing the checkbook, it was so you can get online. Right? Oh, you can get online. There's a lot going out there. Well, you know, I can do that now with my iPhone. Right? So computing versus consumption devices. Right? The majority of consumers don't create content. So computing for them is very different. Computing for them is more consumption. How many speeds and feeds can I get thrown at me and what do I do with those? I think there's a fundamental gap in the industry right now between usage conditions and what these technology offerings look like. And I think I'd rather have people spending their time on telling me, hey, when you build or we build, whoever's building that solution, tell me what you're going to do with that solution. Because obviously, cost is important. And to the extent that we understand what that fundamental usage condition looks like, means we can work on lower cost solutions. It should be a pretty obvious thing, but I, I think I needed to point that out. And so you are here. You know, this is, uh, this is a, I should say, we are here for sure. This is 25 nanometer for, uh, for Micron. And so again, you know, pausing for a second and looking at, you know, how small is 25 microns? What does that fundamentally look like? And so uh, anybody that's got a dollar handy, if you take a dollar out and hold it up 
and look at the edge of that dollar. It's, uh, it's about 2.61 inches wide, and it's very, very thin, right? It's like a sheet of paper, 0 0.0043 inches thin. Now, if I were to take our 25 nanometer NAND memory cells and stack them against that extremely thin cross-section of a dollar, we're talking about putting 2.8 billion physical cells along that small cross-section. And that's enough storage for you to store every single song ever produced by the Beatles and Led Zeppelin on that cross-section of that dollar. As we scale this memory technology, it is absolutely getting harder and harder to do. And so what we're going to see over the next couple of generations here is there's going to be some fragmentation in the industry occurring. And what I mean by fragmentation, it means certain applications are going to require completely different solutions. It's already happening if you haven't noticed. Uh, there's going to be differentiation. Those that have access to exactly what's going on underneath the curtain here in this NAND device are going to be able to build fundamentally better solutions and more reliable solutions.